Welcome to Paris, France for day two of the most important karate event of the combination. From that long journey for those athletes who have yet to qualify for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. 40 athletes from around the world have already booked their... So it's a sign that for to perform in kata is uh, you have to have some uh, physical condition to be the best player. Exactly. And uh, as you can see here now, these are the judges who are seated at a table alongside the tatami. Each has a tablet. They will input a score. That score will be on two counts. One is technical, that is 70% of the mark, and the other is 30% of the mark, and that's for athletic performance. After they have input that score, the computer then takes away the top two scores and takes away the bottom two scores, and the balance is the number that you will see appear on the screen. Yesterday, incredibly, we had a draw in the female yes, round. It's, it's, very, it's very complicated to have, and it's very unusual also to have, but we had. So, this is the first athlete to perform the kata, Park Hee-jun of the People's Republic of Korea. Now, they uh, have to perform a different kata in each of these rounds, but they can repeat the kata that they may have used in the eliminations because this is treated, isn't it, Davide, as a completely new competition? Yes, usually during our competition, the Elsies cannot repeat the same kata uh, made in, in the eliminatories, but now this is a new tournament, new athletes, new same athletes, new tournament, new round robin, and uh, we will get a lot of, of uh, big surprise also. And this is the second of the athletes who will be competing in this first bout. This is Huang Yita of Taipei. 
The choice of Qatar is being kept a very closely guarded secret because in the round robin, tactical uh, positioning of Qatar and choice of Qatar is very important, isn't it, Davide? Yes, yes. To choose the best Qatar with the, be with the, with the, the, the opponent is the most important thing. Sometimes, uh, if you know, if you understand that your opponent is stronger than you, you should not use your best kata to try to beat him. So sometimes it's also this that the athletes think. I'm not going to use my best kata with this because I'm not going to win with this kata. I will use with my best with the next one. So the kata that's been chosen from Park Hee-chun is Anand Dai from the Shitarostu style. And just to let you know that we already have had five athletes com have qualified for the Olympics and they are the those that are at the top standing in the Olympic standings. That's Matteo Bessato from Italy. Yes. Congratulations, Davide. Thank you. Antonio Diaz from Venezuela. Rio Kuna from the host nation, Japan. Damien Quintero from Spain. And Ali Safologlu of Turkey. These athletes now will be hoping to join those amazing talent that we'll be seeing in Tokyo just 50 days from now. Yes, 50 days and we are in Tokyo. What I can see also from the Rao Rabian that we have uh, the, the Asian continent with three people and uh, one uh, from the US, so American continent. Twice, Eagle Park has been a continental bronze medalist. There are two aspects of consideration the technical performance and the athletic performance and just to give you an idea for those that are not familiar with karate perhaps technical performance involves the stances the techniques transitional movements the timing which is vitally important of course the focus the kime the conformance to the style the ruha and this is very much a technical discipline the athletic performance is the strength, the speed, and the balance in the athletes. Well, that is the first kata. Each, as I say, will perform three katas. And it's really important for them to start to get wins on the scoreboard as soon as they possibly can. Because if they get a win in the first round, it sets them up quite nicely. They get two points for a win, nothing if they lose. There's no possibility for a draw in round robin kata. Yes, no possibility to draw. Now we see all the tens of the athletes. Look, and we are in the Coubertin in Paris. That is, uh, I think, uh, after the Nippon Budokan of Tokyo, I think the best uh, second uh, um, venue for a karate competition. And what a, an amazing venue it actually is. Uh, there are no members of the audience because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is a great shame, but it's necessary to make sure that these athletes are kept absolutely safe. And the French Karate Federation has put a fantastic job together to make sure that this tournament complies with the WKF COVID uh, controls. Yes, COVID uh, protocol of WKF is very strict, but to safeguard the, 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 the athletes and uh, all the entourage, and also to reach uh, Tokyo in 
from today 50 days to Tokyo in the best condition for everybody. We are not running any risk for the athletes and uh, I know that with the audience everything could be much different. But this is not the case. We are in particular situation and uh, we are seeing actually in this moment Tokyo that before some weeks ago we, we know we, we know that there there was some uh, some doubts about Tokyo Olympic Games but now are confirmed we are 50 days and uh, we will uh, meet all the best athletes of karate world in Tokyo after 50 year 51 years of the of the World Karate Federation You see here, this is Nico Ashidach. The stances vary. Zenkutsudach, the, the forward stance. Zen, uh, Kekotsudach, Shikodach, this is the straddle stance. The, the language for karate is Japanese. Sanjin Dutch, as we see here now. And the judges are looking very carefully to make sure that the embosan, the pattern that the kata makes on the tatami is correct according to the kihon, the ruha of the school. And one of the great things about the qualification tournament, actually, isn't it, uh, is the fact, Tavade, that many of these athletes have not majored in a, in a, in a world event before, and they've come through the rounds. And this is the time that they're starting to peak to make a claim for the Olympics, which is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Yes. The Olympic Games has to represent the, the best athletes in the world, but also they have to represent all the continents and the best athletes from every continent. And uh, so with this qualification tournament, where the top four athletes coming from the Olympic standing as not to be registered we give the possibility to other people to be present in uh, Tokyo Olympic Games Tokyo Olympic Games is not only a competition is a representation of the karate in the world so this that's why I'm really very satisfied when I see new countries join Tokyo and is it time for Taipei and Wang, Ti, Wang Yita to join those illustrious karateka already qualified. Now the judges will be looking to put the scores in and you'll hear a beep in a moment and that signifies the fact that the scores are being put in. Sorry, there's sounds as though there's a bit of interference on the uh, machine but the scores have now been put in. And there we have the technical score, 17-3-6 against 17-5, 7-6-2 on the athletic performance, 7-5 against, and the winner in the first round for 25 points against 24-9-8 is Fang Yita of Taipei. So what a great start for him. Yes. Now, the table that you saw when the athletes lined up at the beginning, in a few moments, you'll get a chance to have a look at that. But just before then, here is a, a, an opportunity for a replay.
they make their way to the tatami. And once the athlete is in the center, ready to start, he will bow again. That's the official start of the event or of the bout. And the first one is always going to be in the color red. And that's determined by either the seed that they are in the Olympic standing or the points that they can qualify for their position. So the first cutter here now is going to be from Ariel Torres Gutierrez. And his chosen kata is Ohandai. There are 102 catters on the list that can be chosen. And there are, of course, the favored catters. This one was brought in and to made, uh, made to be very popular by the triple world champion, Ryo Kiona, who first performed this in, Jap in uh, Japan, in Tokyo. Yes. If we make a comparison from the style, Billy, we, are, we should count also how many different styles reach Tokyo with yes. the athletes. Yes. Well, the, the two, the two uh, most dominant styles in, in recent times is Shito, uh, Shitoru and Shotokan. Yes. But of course, there are other major stars such as Wadaru and Gojoru, yes, and many other Ruha. Ru from Okinawa. But I think that the highest number will be from Shito. Yes, in Tokyo. Yes, because if we see the already qualified athletes. That we have Mattia Busato is Shotokan, Antonio Diaz is Shitoryu, Rio Kuna, Shitoryu, could we say Shitoryu? Yes, yes. Damian Quintero is Shitoryu, and uh, Alice Folgo, Shotokan. Shotokan. And here we have all of them, I think Shitor. I don't know this guy from Iran, if it's Shotokan. Maybe this is Shotokan. Eh? So the, the, thing, the thing with the uh, uh, this Papuren, no, this is a Shitori also. Practicing uh, Papuren, which is also one of the favorite kata. And because of the importance of getting a win in the round robin system, the, the decision on which kata to perform against which of the athletes is absolutely crucial. For example, if one of the athletes was drawn against the world champion, they may choose to perform a slightly weaker kata because their chances of winning are less. That's not going to happen because the world champion is Rio Kiyuna, who is already obviously safely in his place waiting to perform in the Olympics. And watching this competition. And yes, yes, <laughs> he will be watching all the opponents. For sure, all the athletes already qualify are watching the competition, so we could get to play with them for to be already qualified. Focus of concentration, Chakugan. <laughs> this cat is looking very, very impressive. Yes.
we know that now the athletes are working a lot in choreographic also expression. Yes. So they really have to show a real <coughs> bout, a real fight on tatami. And that's why the expression, all the, all the movement has to be real with, with as there is an opponent in front of, of them. And, w and when you look at the top seats in kata, in male kata, Rio Kuna, Mateo Basato and, and Damian Quintero, what you're just explaining there, Davide, is very evident, isn't it? Yes, and uh, most of them compete in the past because now it's impossible to be high performer in the both the discipline. But most of them were um, committed competitor at the beginning. Yes. So they know how to uh, to deal with the, with the fight and with the, a real opponent. So Abel Fazel. Cesar Giardi completed the kata. So the scores will be input. That's it. And they'll be making, the referee will make it their way to the other side of the tatami to make the announcement. Let's see what the technical performance of either are. 17-9-2 against 17-2-2. At this stage, it's Gutierrez from USA in the lead. 7-7-4 seven, 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 against 7-4-4. And a quite convincing win there. 25-6-6 against 24-6-6. A full point difference there between yes. the two. Yes. So that is two points in the bank. For Ariel Torres Gutierrez from the United States, he'll be delighted with that. This is how he performed. formal bow, which is a tradition for karate. Obviously, this is a, a tradition that is steeped in the East, in many countries, particularly in Japan.
And I can tell you that Wang Yita has chosen the kata Anandai. And once more, if you aren't familiar with karate, or even if you are, you <laughs> now have a chance to make a direct comparison. If you can recall the performance from Heejun Park of Korea, which was Anandai, and make a comparison with that performance that we're now going to see from Huang Yitar of Taipei. Interesting to see Gutierrez. He's crouched at the back. He's not watching the cutter. that was a favorite or is a favorite of Antonio Diaz from Venezuela twice world champion qualified qualified for the yeah. Olympics ah, we have also the news that Antonio Diaz is a candidate for uh, IOC at its commission in Tokyo Wow is that is our, fantastic isn't is it that's great news yes and of course he holds a, a Guinness World Record for the most medals yes. won in a in the world Championships, eight medals, eight different medals. colors. Yes. So. And a great, uh, a great ambassador for yeah, karate. For sure, he's a great ambassador. Also, uh, Antonio is. We cannot say that Antonio is young, because he's not. Compared to me, he is Davide. <laughs> yes, yes, but also compared to me. But <laughs> he represents also many athletes of the past, because he competed with the with, with the top player of he the did. past losing and beating them so he represent the most of the tests of the past and he and he's still part of the future yes and he's still part of the future so good luck to antonio that is member of so no, the wkf at its formation This is a really important match for both of these athletes because they both have one win. Now this is the head-to-head -head and only one of them can come out victorious. Whichever it is, will have four points in the general score. Now, again, an opportunity to make a direct comparison because the chosen kata from Ariel Torres Gutierrez is also an Andai. So, a chance to just uh, sit back, reflect on the performance you've just seen from Huang Yita, and compare it with the performance here of Ariel Torres Gutierrez. Extremely fast upper body movement, isn't there? The tatami grab very good, eh? Very good, very good indeed. Yes, because also we know that the field of play has to be in, be in the best condition to allow 
the athletes to have the best performance. And the mats have been used for the eliminations rounds, and they've been reversed. So they are, uh, it's, a, it's a completely new playing field. Yes. It's like to play the final of the World Cup in soccer in the green carpet. Yes, yes. England green carpet. <laughs> That combination of turns and my gettys, the front kicks, very difficult to be able to make those turns at speed and also to put in strong kicks. But that doesn't seem to have been a problem for Ariel Torres Gutierrez. So if you're trying to make that comparison between these two performances remembering that all of those individual moves are have a meaning uh, the thing to consider here is how difficult it might be for the judges because it's it's years and years of training that have put those judges in this position all of the, the judges that you'll see working here throughout this round robin program are going to the Olympics as well. So they've worked tirelessly, and congratulations to all of them. Now, yes. technical performance. Let's see what it is. 17.78 for Wang Yita. 18.2 for Ariel Torres Gutierrez. 7.62 against 7.8. It's a clear win here, isn't it? Yes. And it is 26 points. Ariel Torres Gutierrez oh. takes that lead by 0.06. So he know, a, he, a, know, he, he knows, knows, he knows that two is wins, <laughs> two wins, that, that seals the yes. deal. Yes. He has now two wins, four points, and he puts a lot of pressure now yes. on Wang Yita, who has got to improve on his performance if he wants to also join this man mm -hmm. in Tokyo. and bow to each other in this way. Yes. Very few indeed. It's fair to say that they are among the top 14 competitors, even at this stage. Yes.
Joseph Kata. Another performance of Anandai. Obviously being a very popular kata, particularly in this round robin, Davide. <laughs> round robin. This, this name became famous eh, in the last period. It At the beginning, I didn't know what's mean around Robin. Now I know, now you know clearly. Clearly, what it is. And, and oh sorry. And, and, and we adapt all our rules to have the best around Robin possible. Yes, in, and uh, because the athletes have three opportunities, they get three chances to to get it right. Sometimes, if an athlete has travelled, as as some of them have from. The other side of the world. Yes. They come and perform one kata, they get beaten, that's it. Yes. They go home. Yes. The, the, good, the very good thing of uh, the Raul Robin is that uh, when they, you, you meet each other, you, mm, you live the moment till the end. And you know that doing your best, uh, in any case, you had the opportunity to have a bout against all the others. So the Raul Robin should be always taken under consideration but unfortunately for the time of the competition yes it, it need weeks with the robin system yeah, not it, days it, it does indeed <laughs> but, but what what the wk have put together in this program the qualification tournament the eliminations yes. five rounds and the repechage where normally there would be two bronze medals those bronze medalists they had to win that place to get in among these four. So the two, f the two finalists in the eliminations have come into the round robin. The two winners of what would be the bronze medal position come into the round robin. They don't get medals for that, but they get medals if they were to get among the first three positions in the round robin. The fourth athlete has had a terrible time because he would have or she would have won the place to get into the round robin, having yes. performed maybe five catters or five or six fights, and then perform three catters or three fights in the round robin and go home with nothing. <laughs> yes. No Olympics. Yes. And no medal to remember the day. We say... Uh, Harsh, isn't it, Davide? We, yes, it's terrible. Uh, uh, the wood medal, no? Exactly. We, I mean, we referred to this yesterday. Hero... Or zero. Zero or zero, yes. You are right. So Abul Fazl Sharda Terry has performed his best here with Anandai and what can Hijun Park do remembering only one winner the loser could be looking at the yeah. end of the road Korea, of course, the home of Taekwondo, the national sport. As you can see here with Heejun Park, they're also extremely good at karate. Yes.
Nothing more can be done by either of these athletes. It's just to await the decision of the judges. You finish in front, huh? Yeah, in Qatar, the performance of the Qatar can be anywhere on the tatami. Yes. Tatami being the name, Japanese name for mat. And the graphic here, 17.64 against 18.06. Oh. Hijun Park in the lead at the moment. Athletic performance. 7.62 against 7.92, and the win is going to go to Hijon Park from Korea. And you can see the shrug of the shoulders there from Abdul Fazal Chirajeri, who realizes that perhaps his dream is now over. Yes. Yes. We'll have a look in a few moments at how that performance went, I'm sure. And then it will be a chance to see the updated graphic. So here's the updated table now, as you can see, at the top of the tree, Ariel Torres Gutierrez already qualified. Hijun Park on two points. Wang Yita also on two points, but look at the score next to them. 50.96, 50.2, uh, 50.4. Abdul Fazal Charjeri, no points at all. I told you, Billy, that 0.02 made the difference i told you before you're right indeed and that was that yes 0 0.02 took the win away from him yes. and the chance and the chance and that is like hundreds of a second in the 100 meter sprint yes, yes. Really, look the winner gets everything <laughs> the loser gets nothing nothing this round robin this is this is the rules these are the rules and this is what we played from the beginning. Zero of zero. Very, very tough. And one has to feel for the athlete that doesn't make the qualification, having worked so hard for years to try to get into this Olympic program. Actually, yes, the Iranian athlete has one very, very no, it's impossible. We don't have it. He's out. He's out. He's out. There's still performance of Kata to come, though, from Wang Yita and also Abel Fazal Shirjeri has got to perform yet again. Tournament here in the Stade Pierre de Coubertin in Paris. And as you quite rightly say, uh, Davide, he should savor the moment and to reflect on his performance and, uh, and reflect on his participation.
in this fantastic program. Yes, as I told you, for every athlete, when everything will be over in the next years, the athlete's career will remember that they got the opportunity to be part of a very big game, because this is a very big game now, when you try to qualify for Tokyo, till uh, the last kata, the last chance, the last fight. It's something that uh, mm, give you a lot of uh, good memories and feel you very mm, optimist for the next career, because exactly. we don't have only athletes here. We have also men and women that has a next life. And it could be as a coach. Yes. Of course. All of them are wonderful, could be a wonderful coach now. Now this is Ohan Dai, the chosen kata, for Huang Kita. And this is the third time we've seen Ohan Dai. We've seen three performances of Anandai. The only other two katas we've seen are Suprempe and Papure. So quite clearly, there are favoured katas here. And the athletes are allowed to make slight variation in the kata. But for example, if they changed a kick to a punch, that would be unacceptable. They have to stick to the ah, yes. general principle of the kata. Yes. There's the bow, and that is the formal or the formality at the end of the performance of the kata. And should an athlete forget to bow, and that has happened, they would be disqualified. Yes, for sure. <laughs> now, for the last time, Abul Fazal Sherjede from Iran. I'm sure we'll be hoping to perform the catcher of his life here. He has his pride at stake. He wants to go home with at least one win under his belt and a score on the board. Well, the choice of kata, Chebana no Kushanku. So this is a kata you haven't seen performed just yet. He certainly is pulling out all the stops to try to get a win in this round robin tournament.
if he can get a win here. He gets on the scoreboard with two. He has to win. If he does, he will be on the same scores as Park and Hong Hee Ta. Then it will go to the head-to-head -head and, of course, the overall cumulative points that will make the decision between the final places. And that was a good performance, David. Eh? Yes, it was a good performance. Let's see what the judges make of this. Has he kept his best till last? And has he done enough? There's the graphic. Technical 18.06 against 17.08. Strong position there wow. for Wang Yi Ta. 7.56 against 7.2. Uh, sadly, it is going to be the end of the road for Abul Fazl Sherajedi of Iran as the win goes to Wang Yi Ta of Taipei. Yes. So here is the table. Wang Yi Ta sits on top with four points. Ariel Torres Gutierrez with four points. And the difference between those is the scores you can see in the right column there, the second the TS column. Hijun Park on two points and Abel Fazel Sierjere with no score. Uh, there is still two cats to go. That is Hijun Park and Ariel Torres Gutierrez. So that position could well change between uh, on the table yet again. So this is Kata number 11. Tokyo and becoming Olympians. But this will certainly make it interesting because Park has two points. Torres Gutierrez has four points. So if Park can take two points from here, it'll go down to the tie break position, which will be considering the head to head and also the points. Papuren, the choice of Kata.
a very confident performance of the Katapapu Ren from Heejun Park of Korea. Currently with two points. If he can pull out a win here, he will be sharing that four-point position. Ariel Torres Gutierrez now. We'll have to wait to see what his choice of kata may be. Scores are input for Heejun Park. Gutierrez is just getting his last moments of preparation and thoughts together. His choice of kata is Anan. And this is the first time we've seen Anan perform. We've seen Anan Dai performed on three occasions. Great start here from the American. is a kata that's been passed down through an old family style, the Rueru style. Resato Nakamiya, Nakama is being credited with bringing the kata to Naha in Okinawa. He brought that there from China. Most famous exponent for the kata, Anan, is Suguo Sakumoto from Okinawa, who is a triple world champion. The scores are in. Now, let's have a look at the technical performance. 17-6-4 against 18-3-4. Gutierrez certainly out on top there. 7-6-8 against 7-9-2. A fabulous performance, in fact. And a convincing win to Ariel Torres Gutierrez of the United States. And the winner is? Oh, and the winner is. Yes, exactly, he is. So he will be topping the table with six points. He'll be followed by Huang Yi Ta from Taipei on four. Park from Korea, Hijun Park on two points and sadly Ulfazul Shirajedi from the Islamic Republic of Iran will have to go home. Here's a chance to have a look at that performance from Gutierrez. are the three athletes that have qualified. Huge congratulations to all three of the athletes. This is the confirmation on the table. Six points to Ariel Torres Gutierrez.
Daniel Kiona, Damian Quintero, and Ali Sofologlu in Tokyo in just 50 days' time, David. Yes. We are, we are. Now we have eight Qatar player qualified. At nine, with, with the home nation. Yes, you're right, nine. So the match will change now from Qatar to Kubite. As you see, there'll be the mat in the center. Two rectangles will be put in place, and they are the positions that the athletes will take as they uh, prepare for combat, for kumite. The three major elements of karate, the kihon, the kata, and the kumite. The kihon is the basic kicks, blocks, strikes. The kata, which we have just been seeing, is when all of those techniques are brought together in a set performance of an imaginary fight against a number of opponents. And kumite is when it all comes together in a battle.
Championships. In Kumite, the bouts are for three minutes. There are four judges seated at the corner of the tatami, each with two flags, one red, one blue. In the center, there is uh, the referee that is able, and the referee here, the referee is able to move around the tatami. Guido Abdullah is the referee for this bout from Guatemala.
So each of the judges can give scores. Yuko, Wazari, or Ipon. Yuko is for one point. And when you see a flag lowered at 45 degrees to the side, that would be indicating a one point or a Yuko score. If the judge puts their arm out horizontally to the side, either red or blue, they're indicating a wazari or a two-point score. And if they put the flag up above their head, it would signify an ippon or a three-point score. For a score to be given, there must be a minimum of two judges agree, in which case the referee will stop the bout and award the point. The referee's job is to manage the, ma the bout and to invoke warnings or penalties if he feels it or she feels it necessary. Coaches have an opportunity to challenge or to uh, re ask for a video review and if they believe that there is a score that has not received the flags from the judges. So they can respectfully request by standing up and putting a card above the head and the match will be stopped and they will have a video review. And I'm sure throughout the program we'll get opportunity to see exactly how that works. If they're correct, they get the score and they get the card back. If they're incorrect, they lose the card and no score. Into the last 40 seconds, uh, no score on the board here. Now, slightly different to the kata, you can have a draw in the round robin in Kumite. And if there is a draw at the end of the bout, each athlete will receive one point. And what's just happened here is the score has been awarded to Tissam Sardini. So she has a Yuko. But you see there's a yellow dot alongside the name or the, or the, the uh, score. And that yellow dot signifies a Senchu. And a Senchu is given when there is no opposed score. So if both had scored, let's say one point each, there would be no Senchu. Because it was unopposed, the athlete gets sent you. But as you see now, the referee has taken that sent you away. And the reason is because it, within the last 15 seconds, if the athlete steps off the tatami or contravenes category two warnings, then they would lose the sent you. And here, Tarek Abdul Salam is the coach for Zakharova of Kazakhstan, who has asked for a video review. And here we see the video review being considered. And this is Pirko Heinonen and Juan Antonio Velasco. They are the two judges who will be looking to say either yes or no. And in this case, have said no. So the coach would have lost his card with just one second on the clock. That one point is sufficient to get on the scoreboard. Two points for a win, nothing for a lose, for yes. a loss. I don't know, the use of the card in this situation. It's too early really, Davide, isn't it's, it? It's too early, too dangerous. It, was not, it was not a clear point, and this, so that's why I, if I was the coach, I didn't use it. Because he won't be able to use it again in the round robin. No, you have two more bouts and complicated bouts because uh, uh, this girl is uh, is uh, not so high, and so the opponents are all of all of the other opponents are higher than her, so it will not be easy yet. now. You know. And after the first bout, we can see here sitting on top, Tissam Sardini with two points, the world bronze medalist from 2018. No scores for anyone else, and Sabina Zakharova has dropped to the bottom of the table with no score, and as you can see, one point against. But 
as we saw yesterday after the first round, Yvette Goronova from Bulgaria was sitting at the bottom of the table and she went on to win the round robin convincingly. So this is our second bag. for this round robin tournament. The first match, Davide, is so important, isn't it, in the round robin? <laughs> yes, really, actually all the matches. Oh, oh well, of course they are, of course they are. <laughs> no. but, it, but it sets your scene. Yes, set yes, because, little, it's it? because it's also set your competition. <laughs> and uh, you are right. Uh, but uh, we we saw yesterday that the last bout uh, changed everything. everything. So this is the more most exciting things in in the round robin. And also because in the round robin meet the two finalists of uh, of the preliminaries. Correct. So that is the most exciting fight. Yes. So in other words, that would have been. If, if uh, as a normal knockout competition, when they get through, the two who go into the final come into the round robin, and they are that's the last match in the round robin tournament. And we have seen yesterday we saw a number of draws, so there are tactics being played out as well. Yes. And what can be the tactic is if I don't feel that I can beat my opponent, I may, I may just try my hardest not to lose and end up with a draw. That yes. gives me at least one point to go on to the grand or the general score, doesn't it? Yes, at least. Coming up to the halfway stage, and still no score. And under normal conditions, a 0-0 score would mean a hante by the judges, and they would decide between the five of them who should win, red or blue. In the round robin, there is no hante. It would be hikawake, which means a draw. As you see, the referee now has given a second C2 or Category 2 warning to both of them for a lack of action, passivity. There are two completely separate levels, uh, areas of warning. One is Category 2 and the other C1 or Category 1. Generally, Category 1 is around contraventions of the rules with respect to excessive contact or dangerous throws. C2 is for everything else in relation to stepping off the tatami, as we saw from Jaragina. But this is what we came to see, Davide. Wow. Karate, which produces good. And that was a really strong kick. And those flags have gone out horizontally, as you see. 
that signifies a two-point score for that body kick. And also, the Senchu. So you'll see the yellow dot appear next to that number two. So, wow. And the dynamic of the bout has changed now because Seragina is leading. And it means now that Claudimar Garces Sequera has got to really put in all she can to try to get a point and salvage something from this first bout. So Regina delighted there. She tries that spinning back kick that Yushiro Geri wow. takes a comfortable win. And she gets that two points, so she's on the scoreboard now. So after the second bout, she's now going to be taking her, her two points. And she'll be sitting at the top of the table now because she scored more points. And it's Tissam Sardini with two points and Anita Saragina with two points. And that was the back kick that did the, the trick. That one didn't quite come off towards the end of the back. And now we jump to the male section. So this is how the table looks for female. Minus 61 kilograms. You see both of them with two points, but point four, Saragina with two, and Simi Sardini with one. So that's why Saragina is sitting on the top of the table. Yes. We're going to flip now from female Kimite to male Kimite. And this is the table, as you see. No bouts yet, and no scores on the table. And the colours in the left hand column there, the red and the blue, they signify the two fighters that will come out in just a moment. Noah Beach from Germany and Bashar Al Najjar from Jordan. So 75 kilos. Who is already qualified in this category, Billy? Raphael. Referee for the bout is also from Italy, Davide. So you really have got quality throughout. This is yes. this Giuseppe is... Zaccaro, one of the most experienced referees in the WKF yes. for more than 25 years. Yes, he's in Tokyo. He's someone that can uh, drive the, the bout very good, all the bouts. So, and as I a guarantee. yes, of course. And as I said earlier, all of the referees and judges are the Olympic judges that have been working tirelessly for many, many years to perfect their skills on the tatami and to be able to do justice to these fabulous karateka. And this may appear a quiet start, but there is a lot of thinking going on, isn't there, Davide? There's yes. a strategy being every, played out. Every little movement is a, is a, is a fight. <laughs> every little step. The psychology of how yes. uh, you see that explosive defensive punch there. But to be honest, I saw also red. Eh? Of course, both at the, both at the same time. Then yes. One went high, one went low. 
And the judges are only allowed to show the very first point that they see. Yes. So sometimes you may think, well, why didn't they go for red? It's because they saw blue first. Uh, and that's why it's wonderful to have an opportunity for the coach to put in a video review request. And as we have seen here from the coach from Noah Beach, and on your screen, the two no. referees wow. are considering it. Strange decision. And they've decided that it wasn't a score. Now, to score a point, all of the points, whether it be for one, two, or three points, Yuko, Wasari, or Ipon, all must carry the criteria for Ipon. There yes, six, yes. Six criteria. You're right, you're totally right. But we know that sometimes some criteria, a part of a criteria miss. And uh, in my opinion, that this was not the case. But in, in days gone by, it could have been a Wazari. But if, if, if it lacks any one of those six criteria now, whether it be good form, vigorous application, Zanchin, proper timing, correct distance, yes, any of them, any of them, it cannot score. And that is what the judges are looking for. That is also what the video review team are considering yes. when they have a look. Oh, we have that one point separating the two. Now on paper, Noah Beach is the more experienced of the two because he's a, a senior world bronze medalist and he's been a bronze medalist as a junior on two occasions and a bronze medalist as a cadet. And he's the current silver medalist from the European Championships in Poric, Croatia. On the other hand, his opponent here, Bashar al Najjar from, Georgian, from Georgia. He's been a, a continental champion on one occasion. But here he is leading his way. Noah Bish has received a UCO score. So the only difference is that Senchu that is held by the Jordan fighters. Yes. Coming into the last 30 seconds. And because of that sent you, that's the reason Bish is putting his opponent under pressure in the corner. Tries that Jordan Mawashi as he steps back, but it didn't quite come off for him. Jordan Yurakunuc, that back fist strike, he loses his pad on the way. Into the last 15 seconds. Uh, Jordan Zuki there, there's a flag there for Norbish. His endeavor is paying off. He gets a Yuko. It's now you'll see nice. the tables turn. And Al Najjar will have to push forward because he wants that win. And if he can score a Yuko, if he could score a Yuko in those closing few seconds, that sent you, that yellow dot, will go in his favor. But Noah Bish not prepared to step back at all and succumbs to a category one, Chukoku. That's the first level of category one. You see an orange dot alongside C1 on your screen. Those warnings don't cross accumulate. That was quite a strong punch from Al Najjar. Video review request from his coach. Referee just looking to see what he thinks. And now in this situation, no video review. the video review would not go ahead because the re well, if, unless the referee felt it was a contact violation, he gave the signal, but he would have to have two of the judges agree. If it was a signal, if it was a contact violation, then it couldn't be a point. But you cannot, you cannot make this video review. I'm sorry. It would depend upon... Maybe, maybe he was not supported. Exactly. And if that was the I case... I didn't see. Exactly. And if he wasn't supported, then if, if one went for uh, the contact and only, only uh, one judge felt that was the case, then he wouldn't be able to, to invoke that. There's the Jordan Zuki. And interestingly, it's, it's the reaction from Beach. 
that uh, maybe the judges are considering rather than a contact because that punch went in really fast and to the to the head now if the video review team felt it was too much contact they won't give a score but if they felt it was a good technique they will give it and it is a yes and Elois Wisberg from Austria puts out the flag and the UCO score what a fantastic call that was from the judge yes uh, from the coach 2-2 now and the Kazamazuki again from Almachar no beast tried to come through time is up and the win goes to Al Najjar. Now, what a fabulous example of fight back from leading, having the Senchu. Nobis coming back in, taking the advantage, went down two points to one. Al Najjar coming back with that Zuki. And then, of course, Nobis desperately trying to go in and succumb to that Kazama Zuki, that front hand punch at the end of the bout. fabulous fighting spirit was being demonstrated there and here is the table as it stands after one bout Bachar Al Najjar from Jordan sits on top with two points scoring three points on his way to that he had two points against and at the bottom of the table Noah Beach but I'm sure that will change as well no points in the general score but he has scored two points and he's have come to three Referees now making their way to the their seats. This is the second bout. Gabor Haspataki from Hungary up against Nurkanat Azikanov from Kazakhstan. Azikanov was a silver medalist in the Continental Championships. Aspataki, second in the World Championships. He's also been a silver medalist at continental level. And twice he's been a bronze medalist. So a bit more experience in terms of medal successes. But as we've seen, that doesn't mean a great deal in the round robin. Referee for the bout, Fariba Madani from the United States. Powerful attack from Haspataki. And he forces his opponent off the tatami. So that's a warning against C2. Very strong fighter, Haspataki, isn't he, Davide? Yes. They are quite similar in the way to fight. You know, some athletes now are not so high so high guard. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because for some way of fight, the guard give uh, a lot of uh, inputs to the opponent. Yes. In the distance. Yes. Also. Yes. So if you see when they are safe and far away, they don't rise so much the guard yes so their front arm as you can see here is held quite low from 
Akanov. It's Akanov. But of course they can use that also, can't they, Davide, as a as a ploy, as a feign, so that they draw yes. in their opponent and then that front hand comes up really fast. And as we can see here from Azakhanov, who opens the score. So he gets the Yuko, the one point score, and he will receive the Zenchu. Video review request. I don't see any technique from the blue. From uh, the it was uh, from Haspataki. It was a Churanzuki, but it seemed to go a little on the low side. But you can see the video review team choosing one of the cameras to look at. You see Haspataki looking down as he punches. And there's a Joran. Yoramawashi, but it's the punch from Haspataki that's had the video review and it's been rejected. And that could be that it didn't have the correct form because he was leaning off to the side. He wasn't in a good position to have maximum potential from that punch. <laughs> that front hand looked sharp though. This. But it was second. And that would have been the time to call the flag, call the. Uh, but uh, the coach has lost his card, so he couldn't do that. But it is Azikhanov who receives the point. He's now on two Yuko, and he still has the Senchu. Haspataki put himself in a bit of a weaker position here, but again, it is Azakhanov who is going to get another point. Now this is the first bow for both of these fighters. And as things stand, going into the last 30 seconds or so with that 3-0 lead. Oh, John Amorashi there. Great game. It was close, wasn't it? Vashigeri was weak. Yes, but and, and, and the other... Asikhanov was moving around to the side as well, wasn't he? So he was moving out of range. <laughs> Zamazuki from Asikhanov. Four points he has now. So the Hansokachui means that he'll have that Senchu taken away, and that's the signal from the referee. So the bat finishes four points to one. Yes, four to one.
comes to needing the two points, Sabina Zakharova, no score yet, and sitting at the bottom of the table, having lost two of those points against so Khan Mar Gases Sequera. So here we have Sabina Zakharova coming out for the next bout. Okay, both, both of the athletes lost the first bout. So this so, is vitally important, isn't it, Davide? Yes. This means very important bout. But they can manage also with the draw. Yes, of course, a draw and everything can change again. Now we see the, the big difference in the height of the athletes, uh, how the difference. Exactly, and it might be an opportunity just to talk about the weight differences and particularly where they've been merged, haven't they, in the men's category, for example. Yes, but in this case uh, there is not a merging because 61 was independent from the beginning. Uh -huh. But you know, some some uh, federation also move uh, some athletes uh, of different categories for this kind of competition. So we get underway. Sakharova wearing the red colours. Carlos Sequera from Venezuela. One of these athletes with very little track record of international successes. And that will mean absolutely nothing if she can get herself into the Olympics. Although the Olympic program would mean that there are seeds the top seeds will be separated, relatively speaking, it will be a, a relatively level throughout. So there's been... So oh, one minute 57 seconds on the clock. There is just that one point and the Yuko and the Sensu advantage. Zamazuki attempt there, oh, and yes. Oromowashi, that yes. flew up there, that combination, Davide, that was Uramawashi. brilliant, wasn't it? But she already tried the, the, the action before, eh? the Oromowashi, now she did. Now, comfortably leading there, and there was a, there was a Jodan Gyakuzuki, a reverse punch off the backhand. Reverse punch, yes. Gyakuzuki used to be the technique for everyone, that was the one, wasn't it's, it, Davide? It's the base of karate. <laughs> Without uh, Yakutsuki, you cannot perform the other technique. Five points to one now. Venezuelan leading.
these extra points that she's still continuing to put the same level of pressure on these extra points could be absolutely vital later on should there be a tie break in the number of wins again another strong as Amazuki Clarimar Gases Sequera extending her lead to an almost unassailable position here. Unless, of course, Sabina wow. Zakharova can do exactly as she just did. And up go those flags for Ippon, a three point score. Now, things have all changed. Seven points to five. Buranavashi is very trendy in this Oh, part. fabulous. <laughs> now, just at that moment where Gasses Sequeira was feeling quite comfortable, she's now under pressure. And still 55 seconds to go, and another score for the Kazakhstan fighter Sabina Zakharova. And now you can see. The Venezuelan feeling immense pressure. She still has the Senchu. There are still 45, 44 seconds remaining. She's on a C2, so she, she can have at least one more. That would be Hans Hakachui and another Jordan Zuki from Zakharova. How tables change. It's going to be a, a warning here for the Kazakhstan fighter for holding on. She'll be on her second level, C2. As we come into the last 30 seconds of the bout. Casa Sequera still trying to keep out of trouble. Being hunted down by Sabina Zakharova. Tries that Chudanzuki, tries a High level punch. Referee calls Yame. There's a video review request. And I think this is probably tactical, David, eh? don't you? No, I think it you was think it was point. a good point? Yes. Uh, let's have a look, see what the review team make of this. There are four screens that they can choose, and they zero in on the one that they feel it gives them the best view. There's a she pushes out that Yoko Gary from that side. The kick goes into the body. Wow. Now, you may well be right here, Davide. That kick certainly goes out. And up comes Darko Zarish. Yes. And he puts out his arm. And you are absolutely spot on. That's what makes you a world champion. Wazari now. Nine points to six. She leads. I think a Nippon score is going to be the order of the day from Sabina Zakharova. If she can pull that out, she will level the score. And if she can force a, a category two warning, that was quite clever from Sequera. She steps out of range. Trying to force more pressure on her, Sabina Zakharova. This is probably one of the most high, well, it is the highest scoring bout we've had. Over the two days so far, yes. I think, Davide, in the round robins tournament. Just two seconds left to go. Sabina actually could not pull that off. Very, very close, though. But the six points that she has on the scoreboard yes. will be very valuable to yes. her. To have she has some chance. Also, if she lost two bouts. Kazakhstan. Now, my apologies, or our apologies, should I say, for any uh, audio interference that you may have had. It was a bit of a problem crackling with the, the headset, but the technicians have changed all of that, so hopefully we'll have no more problems as we go through the program.
Yes. Brilliant, wasn't it? Look, 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 look. Shut. Mm. 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 The ralenti don't show a clear point. No. I'm not Did sure. Yeah, that that was, they see the flag's gone up, but that now that that was a good uh, strong side kick, wasn't it? Push the opponent back as she was making that attack. So now we can see the table. Three of the fighters on two points. We have Sabina Zakharova sitting at the bottom of the table. She scored six points, but she's conceded ten. Anita Serogina on two, and the rest of the field also in that position. As the tables start to change as we go through, and you can see two of the fighters have one bout, and two of them have had now their second bout. And now we see. And now we will have Anita Saragina, and she will be competing against Tissam Sadini. And Wakarete is the, sorry, Tsukete is the command given by the referee, Urukobashi of Turkey. Passivity is the signal with those rolling arms, and that's for inaction from the fighters. So they both have a Chikoku first level warning on category two, C2. lot of study exactly too much too much A lot of testing, tapping, trying to tease each other. Of course, they, this vitally important to keep that I, momentum. I think they are looking for a, a draw, maybe. A draw. Well, that will give them one point, of course. We have uh, Nita Saragina has already got two points. So of course is yes, Billy. They are looking for a for a 
They're looking for a draw. That Very will draw. give them three points and pretty much secure their position. Yes. Not so sure this is... Uh, this is good, to be honest. This is perhaps, Davide, where either hand tape, maybe, maybe not, but if it's a 0-0 score in a round robin, perhaps there should be a, a hand tape in that situation. Or a golden score. Billy, yes, everything could be making different way but one point one point in the in the round robin system is very important it is and it's easy for 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 me or anyone to s simply speculate about how this might work but there's so much at stake here, isn't there? And they know that if it's a draw, as it is now, yes, they realise that they've now got three points. So, here's the table. We have Anita Saragina with three points. Tizam Sardini with three points. They sit in that position. They're comfortable. They pretty much know now that it's down to uh, the, the others to determine whether they go or not. Claudia Garces Sequera, two points. And Sabina Zakharova sits at the bottom of the pile at the moment with no scores in the general score, but has scored six and has ten scored against her. So, uh, tactical draw I think there Davide it's fair to say and here we go back again now to the men's bouts and this is the male minus 75 kilogram remember and this is how the table looks after one match each Nurkat Azikhanov sits on top. Bashar al Jana, he's over two, but sitting at the bottom, we have Aspataki, who's conceded four points. That can all change, of course, because they've still got two more bouts each. Yes. Yesterday, in under 67 kilo, we had also an Hungarian guy that was yeah. fourth in the Raul Robin, so. Yes. Uh, He's Marshal Tadisi. Yes. Okay, so from Jordan, after that fantastic bout, that battle he had with Noah Beach, to get that win, really good fighting spirit he was demonstrating there. And what's he going to do against... Karoli Gabor Aspataki of Hungary. Darish. Now this is a about that Haspataki really does need to win. No scores so far. But the flags have come out in favour of Bashar. Al Najar, who I have to say is looking very promising.
We've got warnings here, category two. Yep, stepped off the tatami. That's the Chudan Gyakuzuki reverse punch from Al Najar. Takes another Yuko, one point score. That's two to his total, and he has the Senchu. Jordan Mawashi attempt there from Hashpataki. And the Jar just tries that reverse punch as he came out of that clinch. Wakarete to separate. Just halfway through the bout. There's still two points difference and the Senju. That can all change in the moment of one successful Jodan kick or a takedown follow up with a punch from Haspataki. Front hand fired in there from Al Najar. But there was also a punch from Haspataki. So two flags for each. Both will receive a score. Hospitaki knows he's, he's got to go for it, hasn't he, Davide, in this last minute. He's really under pressure with no wins yet. Oromawashi was nearly there. Pushing. Pushing to keep the distance. Yes. The right did. distance to score the, that kick. <laughs> the point yeah. of the kick. I don't think that was intentional. I think he just uh, slipped. But Gen it's, it's the second time. Yes. Uh, it's not intentional. Maybe. But, maybe but, Billy but, because but you can you can fake that quite easily if yes. you need to. There was no faking of that uh, reverse punch though. That increases the score by a further Yuko to Bashar Al Najar of Jordan. Four points is one. He leaves. He has the Senchu. Good counter punch there as Al Najar went in from Haspataki. <laughs> Referee penalizes. And Lejar and also Haspataki. He gave the command, Wakarete, separate, but they didn't. Into the last 30 seconds. If Al Najar can continue to hold this position, he will have secured himself a position in the Olympic Games. Haspataki trying to put him under the pressure, though. In 20 seconds, he will have a third category two against him for the Jogai. And that tap on the tatami, that tap on the floor by the judges, that's the only penalty that they can signal. Yes. 20 seconds there. Eh? This is 20 seconds in the life of Haspataki that he will never forget. Can he come back? He cannot fall on the, f on the floor every time. That's tech. the third time. The fourth time. Fourth time, yes. And he's in the last 15 seconds. Oh, yes. wow! Yes. What a brilliant yes. takedown. Yes. What a brilliant and so well deserved, Davide. One hand. And so well, well deserved. deserved. Fantastic.
all four flags flew up in the air to give that Ippon to Haspataki. Look at the way that now has been Al Najjar is he's head bowed. But I have to say, Haspataki, he was absolutely why so early what, today? Oh, wow. Fantastic. 5 4 now. So he's a Hans Okachui. He can't step off the Tatawin anymore. There's still two seconds and there's still time for an Ippon score or a Yuko from anybody. That's it. Time up. Well, what a this brilliant performance there. It was very dangerous in the end there. Eh? Pushing the athletes with the shoulder. Exactly. Very yes. dangerous to be penalized. Eh? Yes, yes. Well, Haspataki has got himself, he's clawed himself out of a perilous position there with that brilliant Jordan Ippon. A takedown, one handed takedown, fantastic. Come, it may come. It's coming. It will very be there. soon, very soon, <laughs> the end of the bout. Now. Here we go. Wow! Look at it. Look at the joy. He knows that that point is going to be. It could be the ticket to the Olympics. <laughs> it could be. He's still got more work to do, of course. Look at the brilliant look. Ochigari with that takedown and the Jordan punch. Great shot. Here's the table now. Two points, two points, two points in the male minus 70 kilogram. Haspataki, look, he's shot straight up there now into second place. Eight points against, but he scored six, and he's trailing now. The only person above him at this moment is Bashar al Najjar. That head-to-head -head could be a decider later on. Yes. Who takes the top of the table? Also the last position. And also <laughs> the last position. Yes. Yes. Wow. This time, we get back to Nurkanat Asilikonov. Well, that was a brilliant match, wasn't it, the other day? That was a brilliant match. That was the, I think that was the best one for me so far. Yes, for this afternoon, yes. The drama. Yes. He will be looking for a win here. He loses this bout. Could be curtains for him. Yes. We will see. Now both of these know how important it is to get a win. Yes. So 
Oh, Norbish lost his first bout. Azakhanov won his first bout. Oh, Azakhanov, he could be sat he could satisfy himself with a draw here. Yes, he, he could be. But not if Norbish has anything to say about no. it. Oh, I think you might see a different Azakhanov in a moment. Because Norbish now has the first point and the Senchu. <laughs> a very different attitude from the fighter from Kazakhstan now. He knows that if he loses his bout against Norbish, they will both be on the same points. And there's some tough matches left in this round robin. Referee just indicating he feels that there was a time wasting, but didn't get the support from the judges, so he can't invoke any warnings. Quick turn out of danger there from Noah Beach. Spun round into the center of the tatami. Yes. Jordan Oromowashi. Now. I don't know. But was his back foot off the tatami when that happened, though? That was no, 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 no. It was before for sure, but maybe he missed. No video review card. No. Be interesting to see what that looked like in a replay. The judge is sitting in the, wow, the chairs. Man. They weren't convinced. I wasn't sure if his back foot was off the tatami or. Or, as you say, Davide, whether it missed. It's all about angles, isn't it? Yes. No problem in securing the support from the judges in that attempt for a score. There will be a Yuko awarded to Noah Beach, and there is a, a call for a video review request from the coach of North Kanat, Asikanov. Yeah. You see both punches going in at the same time. One and both to the face. Well, that looks pretty good from that angle. But what do the video review team make of it? It was the punch there from Noah Beach. And there's the Zuki, the Gyakazuki, the reverse spawn. punch. But as I say, the judges can't score both. They can only put one flag out, and that's the one that they see first. They may well have seen both, of course. But it really depends on what. And they are taking some time to study this. I don't know why. From a different really. angle. There, again. In my opinion, is point. Well, you haven't been wrong so far, Davide, that's for sure. And yes. you've been right again. Very good score. Great call from the coach. Yes, too long. Because the score was clear. So it's two points to one now, with just 20 seconds to go. Noah Beach in the blue still has the central advantage. Charles Achuda Mawashi Gary. What a great time to yes. put that kick in. Yes. Because he changed tactics totally deep. Came tank, away tank. from his hands and went into the kicking mode. He never performed any chudan, eh, Gary? No. Before in this in this bout. Ah! 
good defences there from Beach in that difficult position. There's a call from the coach, Tarek Abdusalem. He believes there was a score yes, as the clock went down to zero. He's looking for some points. Yes, for the because the points are so important as yes. well. Not just the fact that he needs a win, but those points. And if he's right here, he tries the Ashibarai sweep, the leg sweep, and there's the Zuki. Now, whether it was correct distance, only the video review team will no. decide on that. This is clear not. There's the Ashi Barai. That was a good leg sweep. And there's the punch. But was Noah Beach moving back? If he's moving back quickly, it should not be a score. But sometimes in slow motion is different to when it's in full speed. Did he just get his chin out of the way? Did he just move that target away from the punch? These are the things that are going through the minds of the judges. They decided that it was no score, and of course, Davide, you were absolutely right yes. yet again. Much before, Billy, much before. <laughs> <laughs> and that win goes to Noah Beach, and what an important win it was for him too. That was the Uramawashi. But he stumbled. There was the I kick. Was in. Was in. That was a great Chudamawashi, wasn't it? right into the midsection. No messing. Here's the table for the male, minus 75 kilograms so far. Look, all of the fighters on two points each. Yes. So this is how important those points are, isn't it, Davide? We still have Bashar al Najjar on the top of the table, seven points four, seven against. Noah Beach, 6.44 against. Those differences may come into it later on. Karoli Gabor Hashpataki, 6.8. And at the bottom of the table at the moment, Nurkanat Aznikov has two points, but 5.5. Five. So all still can change in this, in this final round. Wow, that's going to be so exciting. The female. Minus 61 table looks like this. We have Anita Saragina at the top. Tissam Sardini in second place. Both of those with three. Sitting at the bottom of the table, Sabina Zakharova. No points on the general score just yet, but she has scored six and lost, had 10 against her. Claudia Garcisa Sequera sitting in the middle there at third place. And she took a draw, a draw in the second. That so she has three points now. And it looks here that Sabina Zakharova could be the one 
who misses out. But if she gets a win, it can change the tables again. So it's a do or die, really, from the fighter from Kazakhstan. The referee from Sweden. Francesca Marquez Arrulla. So again, Serregina would be quite happy for a draw. So she doesn't have to go forward. She knows that she's sitting pretty with that three points. The pressure must come from her opponent. Sabina Zakharova has to win this bout if she has any chance of staying in there. Counter punch attempt from Serajina. Sakai <laughs> Koku, category two against the Ukrainian fighter as we go into the last minute. <laughs> and now the Ukrainian yes. opens up. She puts the score in there. She may well have sealed the fate of her opponent here from Kazakhstan, Sabina Zakharova. She may be looking in the wrong direction from Tokyo. Vladimir Garces Sequeira has two points. The only way, the only hope really from Zakharova is to get a win in this bout. And she only has 16 seconds in which to do so. If she doesn't, she is going home with nothing. into the last five seconds. And Saragina quite happy to step off the tatami. She'll lose the Senju, but there's one second left on the clock. We have seen bouts won and lost in that last second. Let's see. And instead of an attack, Zakharova decides to stay put. I don't understand why. I mean, you could do something. I don't know. But she gave up there. She, but she only had, she, if she could have put another tack in and she would have had two points. But anyway, she is not going to go to Tokyo. But this athlete certainly is. Anita Serajina from the Ukraine.
So we have Anita Saragina. She's sitting on the top of the tree now. She has five points. Sardini, Bissam, Sardini, three points. Claude Mayer, Ceres, Sequera from Venezuela. She has two points. Sabina Zakharova, nothing. She sits at the bottom. So the, over. The, it is, but we still have a, we still have another bout, of course, and that is between uh, Tissam Sardini and Claude Mier Gares Sequera. But it's a formality, really. So these two know that they're home and dry, but it's just who is going to finish in what position. There are still gold, silver, and bronze medals to be won. Well, gold medal will go to Anita Serogina. Her lead is unassailable. says Sequera from Venezuela. Going through her mind, our mixed emotions. I want to win this bag, but I'm going to the Olympics. Referee for the bout is Robert Hamara from Norway. Robert Hamara is the General Secretary of the R Referee Commission for the World Karate Federation. Tosukate is the command. There's a she steps off the tatami. Now says Sequera will get her first warning. Category two, a Chukoku C2. Good Zuki there from the fighter from Morocco. Yes. Very quick, wasn't she? And she uh, will have the Senchu advantage to go with that. You'll see the yellow dot appear, no doubt, shortly in that, uh, next to that one. There's a Jordan technique there. There was a flag from one of the judges. Yes. The coach from Morocco has asked for a video review. And there's the Jordan Mawashi. Mm -hmm. Did it hit? Did it hit the shoulder? That's the question. Did it meet the target? Mm. Mm. Yes, it's wow. point. Wow, it's point. You're right again. Again. Day. <laughs> you should be doing the video reviews, yes, I think. Yes. Well, no, the video review team have yes. actually done a really no, good yes, job. Yes, they've yes, they've yes. got it right every time. Yes, yes, That's fantastic. Um, but no, uh, the, the experience, the eagle eye that you have for the technique. And, and that's the thing, sometimes with experience, it's the speed of decision. Yes. And uh, obviously there was one of the judges, Mark Yunting, who went for that Ipon, Mark Yunting from China. Double Mawashi attempt there. But uh, to some, Sarini not able to convince any of the judges or the coach that that was a point. Takazuki there, this time she's changed from the kicks to the punches. 
extends her score by a further Yuko. seconds left big score big lead from the Moroccan wow I didn't see it eh? Jordan technique is being indicated well, let's have a look there's the Kazami Zuki there's the Uramawashi now, did it go between the arms? That's the that's the key. Did it meet the target? Came up? He meet the target. It looks as though it may have done, doesn't it? Ah, what about the video review team? What do they make of that? Even with this angle, it's difficult to see with absolute certainty. The team have said no. Okay. And, and they did have four cameras that they could have considered. Into the last 21 seconds. It, time up and a very convincing win to Tissam Sardini from Morocco. Adds another two points to her tally. So she now has five points and it will depend on situation first yep she's got five points she tops the table she, she takes the gold medal she just leapfrog Anita Serogina and may have an opportunity here to see that Uramawashi is and that's the one as you can see he was blocked was blocked. It was blocked. The, uh, and that's what I was thinking. Did it go between yes. the arms or did it get hit the arm? And the video review team are absolutely spot on. It was blocked. And here we see the final table. Five points. Uh, Tissam Sardini, she now tops the table. Six points for zero against. Anita Saragina in second place. She has five points, but she has scored less points. And sitting sadly, we have Claudia Casas of Sequera. Of course, she's now qualified also for the Olympics. But sadly, going home, Sabina Zakharova uh, from Kazakhstan. Not uh, not her day, I'm afraid. So that is the final position now. in the female round robin, and we're back to the male minus 75 kilogram. And now let's. This is going to be such an exciting final round, isn't it, Davide? All of the fighters on two points. We've got a 7-7, seven, seven, a 6-4, six, a 6-8, six, a 5-5 five, five at the bottom there. Still much to play for, isn't there? Everything is possible. Eh? Everything is possible. We have no idea who... We know that three of them are going to go to the Olympics, but we can't tell you yet who is not. Bashar Al Najjar, who was fighting so well until he succumbed to that technique from Noah Beach.
here we have Nurkanat Azakanov. Patikanov have had one win and one loss. Got two points. Referee for the bout, Eloise Wisbeck from Austria. So I don't think this is a situation where either of them would like to settle for a draw, Davide. They can't afford to... Mm, this is not the bout. Eh? This is not the bout for that. They will want to win. But look, could be also a draw because if, if in the next bout someone win. Exactly. But would they want to take the risk? <laughs> Doesn't look as though they're going for a draw. Because the score is going to Azikhanov of Kazakhstan. Video video review request was it seemed a little late. Uh, the centu has been put onto the score but uh, the referee would take the century away if this call from the Jordan coach is successful. So the paddle have decided on which screen to look at. And there was the Zuki. And there was a Zuki coming back. No, no. Is this one is the first? Oh, let's have a look again. That's the two down punch. Was in the body, I think. Eh? Well, the indication from the assistant coach by the cl by the coach was that it was a two down, and that was a Jordan. No, but the punch. Jordan Jordan was already ah okay. There's a Chudan punch from red yes. and a Jordan punch from that blue. But it's the Chudan punch that's being the Chudan punch is the one that's being yes. considered here. No. And it hasn't because it, it could be that the form was incorrect, yes. that the elbow was bent. But, and also the the power. Yes, the vigorous application. Yes. So there's two elements of the criteria for punch, Chudan Mawashi there that went in. I'm not sure that had the power to receive a score but the judges have gone in favor of Al Najjar so the the centu that is held by Ashikanov is remained because the video review request was rejected Still 1-1. One, one. The only difference being the century. So, Al Najjar goes high. Ashinikov goes low. Two points now to each, uh, each of them. The only difference yet again is the Senchu, that's all that separates them, so Al Najjar goes high again, but Ashinikov goes low. And no cards, no opportunity for the coaches to call for a review. And it is Ashinikov who is creeping ahead now, one point, and the Senchu, he'll be hunted down by Al Najjar. Neither are going to be willing, willingly losing this bout. They are desperately just yes. need to take a win. And with this sent you at the moment. And in any case, a lot of points. Yes, yes, yes. That's the other important aspect to this, isn't it, Davide? Yes. 
Should it go to a tie break? And those flags fly out again there for Nurkanat Ashinikov. Four points to two. Needs a big call now for Al-Najjar. Al-Najjar receives the warning for holding on. He's on second level, category two. 40 seconds left to go. Well, there was no question that was a, a definitely a uh, a slip from Al Najjar tries that John Anzuki over the top. Win to the last 15 seconds. Two seconds, one second left, and that's it. Time up. What a fantastic fight from Nurkanat Ajnikov. Great win. He loses to Senchu, but that doesn't mean anything. He takes the win. That's two really important points for him. Yes. Very, very important points. He now has four. He sits on top of the table at the moment. Yes. And now could be a draw. And now could be a draw. Unfortunately. Yes, yes. And now could be a draw. So this could be a tactical fight. And that would freeze out, of course, Al Najjar, who has fought incredibly well. So this last bout will be between Norbish and Karoli Gabor Hashpataki of Hungary. Table as it stands. We have Nurkanat Ajnikov with that win now on the top of the table with four points. Bashar Al Najjar, two points. Noabish, two points. Karoli Gabor Hashpataki, two points. And look at the scores alongside that. This is going to be a really crucial bout. sits in second place one of these fighters get two points that will change dramatically if they get one point each it forces Al Najjar to the bottom of the table yes. I think all will be revealed in the opening minute first third of the bout. We'll see what the intent of the fight is, is looking like. The group is qualified for passivity. Potential. Karoli Gabor Aspataki from Hungary in his third and final bout in this Olympic qualification tournament in Paris. The Pierre de Coubertin Stadium. The name of the stadium is from the father of the modern Olympics, Pierre de Coubertin.
This is the final round, the final bout in the male minus 75 kilogram category. It's the final bout in the tournament. Noah Bisch for Germany in red. Haspataki for Hungary wearing those blue colors. Is this going to be a draw or is this going to be a win? It's going to be a draw. And that sends Al Najjar home. But it certainly looks as though they are sparring rather than fighting, Davide. And this is uh, where perhaps Hante, if it's 0 0 or Golden Score, perhaps something needs to be injected into this situation because it seems to me to be unfair on Bashar al Najjar. He was fighting so hard early on. This is uh, the tactic is that they're, they're on the edge of they're, they're not attempting any genuine attacks no and this is is but it's not passivity because they're doing something, something. so <laughs> like a bunkai <laughs> <laughs> well maybe not as not as not as powerful as bunkai frankly and now the referees had enough and they will both get Passivity warnings. Uh, uh, in some ways, you you can't, you can't blame the the athletes because they are doing what they're doing their job. They're trying to qualify for the Olympics. If the rules allow them to do so, they will do it. Yes. And it, all they need is a point, and a draw will give them a point. But if somebody springs the trap and scores within the next 25 seconds. Now, last 15 seconds, no more passivity. No. Now, will they try to nick the point at the end? Will it be Haas Pataki or Noah Bish? Will no. no, there will be no point. Or they will just settle will for no letting the clock tick down. There will be no point. And that's it. Time that's up. It. One point each. One point each. Hikiwaki, that ends the tournament with a draw. Not so, not so many highlights in that bout to uh, replay either, that has to be said nowadays. So we'll go straight to the table. Amazing highlight. <laughs> At the top of the table then, Nurkhanat Aznakov with four points, Noah Beach with three, Karoli Gabor Hashpataki with three, and sadly, I have to say, it does grieve me to say, Bashir Al Najjar has to go home with nothing. Yes. What to say, Billy? The athletes has uh, the right to use uh, of the course. rules. Of course. And, uh, you know, when we have round robin, everything is possible. They deserve to be in Tokyo, so let's oh, they, go. They're the ones who won the match. They're yes. the ones who got the three points. Yes. They, they deserve to go. You're right. And so, welcome to Tokyo also for uh, these three athletes. Thank you. Exactly.
Okay, so as we see the athletes come on to the tatami, there's the final table. And unfortunately, I have to say goodbye and thank you so much, Davide, because I know that you have to leave. Yes. And, uh, but thank you so much for your time. It's you, always been great, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Billy, and congratulations to all these amazing athletes to reach Tokyo 2020 plus one. See you guys in Tokyo. Fantastic. You see, I'm sunny on the top of the table there, and that's down to the points that she scored. Anita Saragina in second place, and Claudia comes in at third place. These are the three athletes that will be going to Tokyo, and they will be joining Merv Chabon from Turkey, Gianna Lotfi of Egypt, Jovana Prakovic from Serbia, Mayumi Samoya from Japan, and Yaoyan Yin from the People's Republic of China. And the male under 75, minus 75 kilogram. These are the three athletes that have qualified. Here is the table. Azinakov at the top, four points. Norbish with three points. Karoli Hashpataki with three points. They will be going to join Rafael Ageyev from Azerbaijan, Barman Ashkari Gonchi from Iran, Luigi Busa from Italy, Stanislav Haruna from Ukraine, and Ken Nishimura from Japan. So the qualification tournament has finished. The elimination round where we saw six of the bouts. These fighters have come through the round robin system with a further three bouts. Each of those athletes have now earned their place on that plane, on their journey to the Olympics, the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. And good luck to everybody and commiserations for those that have not made it through today. It's a very sad day, of course, because they have to go home. They've worked so hard, so tirelessly for the past four or five years in this Olympic cycle. The World Championships in 2018, 13 Karate One Premier Leagues, five Continental Championships and seven Karate One Series A. This qualification tournament, the elimination stages, and the round robin. A very, very grueling schedule of activity in that journey. We'll be having the medal ceremony in just a few moments because the winners of the event will receive their gold silver and bronze medals. First of the medal ceremonies will be for the male kata. And onto the podium come the athletes. Mark Kijun takes the bronze medal. A good job, well done. Wang Yita from Taipei takes the silver medal in the tournament, the round robin tournament.
Ariel Torres. Gutierrez from the United States. He takes the gold medal, tops the table, and is now to become an Olympian. Well done, guys. Big hugs. We're going to Tokyo. We're going to the Olympic Games. one kilogram category. The athletes make their way to the podium. Adimar Garces, Aquera from Venezuela. Takes the bronze medal. Regina leading the table for much of the round robin, but then was pipped at the post to take the silver medal. And the gold medal goes to Hissam Sardini of Morocco.
Olympic qualification athletes who will be on their way to Tokyo to compete in the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. The debut for karate, the sport of karate, the first time it will ever appear in the Olympics has been Karate's been part of the Youth Olympics in Buenos Aires in Argentina. It will be in the next Youth Olympics. Karate has never been in the full senior Olympic Games, but it will be in Tokyo in just 50 days. Rui Gabor Hospitaki takes the bronze medal. Most important point he scored, that three point score, the Yippon with that takedown. Brilliant. Noah Beach from Germany takes the silver medal. There is the final medal position of the athletes who will be qualifying now to compete in the very first Olympics for the sport of karate. So that completes day two of the qualification tournament. We still have another day of action tomorrow. We have two more categories to go, just six positions left. That is for the female plus 61 kilograms and the male plus 75 kilograms and that will be happening tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned and come back and see us again tomorrow. And before we leave you today, I'd like to say thank you so much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the program. I'm Billy Brennan. David Benatello has had to leave us. But we're going to leave you now with some of the fantastic shots in the top five moments of days one and two.